people are calling in for certain priorities. All right? It might be price, it might be safety, it might be trust, and it might be convenience. All of these are basically the top priorities that people call in for. And they're going to say certain things in order to help you identify what that priority is. What would a customer say to you to let you know, hey, price is my top priority? Do you guys carry used tires? Absolutely. What else? Fantastic. What kind of deal can you give me? Absolutely. What else? Rebates. Rebates. Fantastic. What kind of rebates? What kind of promotions? Can I get a coupon? Do you have Groupon available? Absolutely. What else? What's the cheapest tire you have? There you go. Beautiful. Hey, I'm looking for Pirelli Run Flats. <laughs> you, you think that, that customer is concerned about price? Uh, I've been shopping tire racks. There you go. I've been shopping tire rack. I've been shopping around. Are you price competitive? Are you price competitive? Fantastic. Will you match price? There you go. Anything else? It's a good list. Those are definitely things a customer would say to you to let you know, hey, price is this guy's top priority or gal's top priority. Right? So let's think about that. If they say one of those things, priority is their top concern. All right? What about safety? Where's my safety group at? All right. What would a customer say to you to let you know safety is their top priority? What's your warranty? Fantastic. What? What would you put on your car? That's awesome. Um, this is for my daughter or yeah. my son. This is for my kid's car. There you go. There you go. Of course, that could be for uh, price too, right? What's the cheapest thing you got? It's going on my daughter's car, right? What else? I have my kids in the car. I have my kids in the car. Nice. Want to get the car out first. Fantastic. The type of driving they're doing, driving in the rain, snow. Outstanding. There you go. What are the reviews on these products? What are the reviews? Nice. How many have you sold? Outstanding. How many of these do you sell? Well, it's my biggest selling tire. Fantastic. What else? You want to know how old the tires are, top number. There you go. Can they wait or should they wait to get something done? I like it. Can, can I wait to get this done? My brakes are grinding. Do I have a couple thousand more miles on them? As long as you don't stop. <laughs> Fantastic. What else? Generally on the safety, the price is one of their biggest concerns. They're looking for the best product or the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of those people might ask you about the tread wear or you know, the, the temperature rating or things like that, right? There you go. Do you ha talking about mileage, right? Name brands. Name brands. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, name brands, it's a name brand, right? People trust the brands. People trust the Michelins and the Goodyears and the uh, Big O's. When you look at their car, you they trust, look the trust the market. Like, they they trust the market. Do they have stickers on the window that might right. college the stickers, things right. of that college nature, stickers, right? Baby on board. I mean, yeah. those are things safety. Absolutely they are. And usually those people are calling and they're talking about their family and their kids and things like that, right? Absolutely. And we're listening. Yes. Any other ideas from you guys? Generally, keep records. They do. They are very record keeping people, right? Absolutely. And usually you can tell when they're writing everything down that you're saying on the phone, right? right. Trying to write everything down. The pauses. Yeah. The Absolutely, absolutely. So those are definitely things that a customer says to you to say, hey, safety is going to be my top priority. All right, what about trust? Where's my trust group? Fantastic. What would a customer say to you to let you know trust is their top priority? What kind of warranty do you offer? Are you certified? What kind of warranties do you offer? What else? What services are you providing? Absolutely. What brands? Because kind of go hand in hand with safety, right? Major brands are huge when it comes to trust. They trust the marketing, and usually they trust the brand as well. What else? Fantastic. It goes a long way for trust. It goes a long way for safety too, right? 
I mean, when you're covered with 460 locations nationwide, it's huge. Huge in trust. How busy are you guys today? Okay, how would that b build on trust? If you're busy, you've probably got a pretty good shot. Okay, there you go. Five days a week, chances are I'm not doing very good work. Absolutely. I love it. There you go. Absolutely. You know, my mom has ridden on every single tire we sell. What else? Huh? She drives a whole lot. Yeah. Come. Yeah, an 18 wheeler. She. Yeah. 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 A different tire in each wheel. What else? What else would a customer say to say, "Hey, trust"? I'm sorry. Offer every option. Okay. There you go. Uh, they went to another place, they lied to them, or didn't provide the services they said they would, and they will not be going back to that place anymore. Absolutely. Prior when, experience. Prior experience. Dealer, when you you there you go. Service. There you go. I was referred to you guys from one of my friends, families, relatives, whatever. Fantastic. Trust is huge when you show them the inspection and you show them the stuff that's good on their car. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It goes a really long way. Huh? I've had people ask me if I'm on commission. Okay, that can go away to building trust, right? Because when people are on commission, they have a tendency to not think about what the customer needs, right? They think about the money. So, absolutely. Anything else? How many tires do I need? There you go. That can go into trust, you know. Absolutely. What's Absolutely. There you go. I love it. That's fantastic. Phenomenal list about what a customer would say to you to let you know, hey, trust is this customer's top priority. Where's my convenience group at? All right, convenience group. What would a customer say to let you know convenience is their top priority? Do you take appointments? Fantastic. Do you offer shuttle service? Outstanding. What time do you open? Early bird drop. Nice. Fantastic. Can this get done today? Is there a waiting room? Can this get done today? How long, long does it take? How long does it take? Do you have them in stock? We offer Uber delivery. Uber delivery. <laughs> Good luck. That's Jason's plan. Jason. Yeah. Uber <laughs> delivery. You're gonna. They do. Uber Uber delivery for like the tires to the customer's house? No. Oh, okay. No, we do that. Yeah, you do that too. But all right. All right, there you go. I'm tracking, huh? There you go. Like, all right, all right. We'll come get it from your work. Fantastic. I love it. Do you guys have Wi-Fi? You ever have that customer call and ask? Yeah, actually, yeah. You have Wi-Fi. Yeah. A lot of people work when they're there, right? That's convenient for them. All right, so. Now that we've identified what a customer would say to us to let us know these are their priorities, we have to tailor our conversation to those customers. And the way we do that is we talk about features and we sell the benefits. You know, everybody buys based on, here's another acronym for you, everybody buys based on this acronym. What's in it for me? With them. What's in it for me? Think about the last time you bought something. Why did you buy it? Because you wanted it? Because it did something for you, right? Even that 30 rack of beer. It's going to do something for me. That's why I'm going to buy it. Hopefully it's going to get me messed up and I don't have to... I don't have to think. That was a good save. I was going to talk about something else, but I'm pretty sure she keeps listening in, so... Yeah, yeah. Ball and chain. I think she has a spy device on my watch or something. But anyway, right? So we want to tailor our conversation. We talk about the features. We sell the benefits. So for price, if a customer to note, lets you know, you identify a customer's priority is price, what can we talk about in that conversation? 
Guaranteed low price, absolutely. There you go. We will shop for you. Fantastic. What'd you say? Oh, I thought you said something. Huh? Benefits of the products. There you go. Now, usually the benefits and the features and benefits of the product, I usually say for in the store. Because what's our goal on the phone? To get them in the store. When it comes to price, maybe a little bit to help build value into it but I would save a lot of that for in the store. What else can we talk about when it comes to price? Financing and rebates. Financing and rebates, absolutely. Someone's concerned about price? Well, hey, guess what? I have a great offer for you. We have $50 mail-in rebate with that tire purchase. All of the free stuff we give, right? The free rotations, the free flat repair, the free re rebalancing, the free alignment check, right? Absolutely. All the benefits, right? You know what's funny? A lot of people call in asking what's the cheapest thing you have because they don't know what else to ask. We're the experts, right? We know what we, we, we want out of our tires and things like that, but they're calling and saying, hey, what's the cheapest thing you have because they don't know any better. So that's their natural go-to question, all right? So, we can talk about our free stuff, the inspection process, the flat repairs, the rotations. We can talk about those promotions, rebates, financing, the opening price point tire. Anytime they're concerned about price, those are the things we can talk about. What about safety? What can we talk about when a customer's top priority is safety? Certified technicians. Absolutely. Certified technicians. How many of you guys have ASC certified technicians? Fantastic. How many of you have technicians that are certified to show up to work? <laughs> yeah, you have certified technicians, right? Absolutely. What a certifiable technician. There you go. What else can we talk about to tailor our conversation to safety? Comprehensive inspe inspections of the vehicles. Absolutely, the comprehensive inspection. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Definitely the inspection. What else? Absolutely. Well, I commute in the rain and, you know, I don't live around here. I'm from so-and-so. i got to make it back right? in this type of weather. There you go. All right, so you're looking for a tire that's really safe in the rain as well as long distances so you yeah, can get back home. Epic tour for 49 bucks. You may want to step it up a little bit. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else? What else when it comes to safety? Speed ratings. Talk about that a little bit. Yep. Huh? The warranty we offer with all our stores. Absolutely. Warranty and locations. Fantastic. What's recommended for their vehicle and or type of driving? Okay. Recommendations based on vehicle or type of driving. Fantastic. How do we repair the tires? There you go. That can definitely be a safe thing when they're calling in with a flat repair. Hey, we use a patch plug instead of just the drill-in plug or just a patch on the back side. Absolutely. How long does that last? Life of the tire. There you go. There you go. What about years of experience? You guys ever talk about your tech's years of experience? I've got 40 years between my three mechanics. 40 years between your three mechanics. That's fantastic. I love it. What about your tire tech's years of experience? You ever talk about that? James, how many tire techs do you have? How many tire techs you got? Five. Five? What's their combined years of experience? Well, I think I got one guy that's got more time in by himself. <laughs> All of them combined, but um, uh, I'd say within like 20 years. 20 years? You have over 20 yeah. years? Wow, that's okay though because you have over 20 years of experience. Mr. Customer, we're looking to put these tires on. We have over 20 years of tire technician experience installing your tires so you know they're going to be safe on the road, right? So imagine though if you're starting to talk about your tire technicians to your customers, how's that going to make your tire techs feel? It's going to make them feel good, right?
And if they feel good, if they feel good working there, you think they're going to leave? No. Food for thought. What about trust? What can we talk about when it comes to trust? Trust and safety go hand in hand? Absolutely, absolutely. So we can talk about that inspection process. We can talk about the show and sell, right? Taking the customers back into there. Hey, Mr. Customer, not only do we do that complimentary inspection, we'll also take you out to the vehicle and show you exactly what's going on with it so you know we're not taking advantage of you. So when we're on the phone with them, let's let them know, hey, we'll educate you on what's going on with your vehicle. We will show you what's going on with your vehicle. We will build that trust with you so you know you're being treated right and you won't have that previous experience like James mentioned, right? They call saying, hey, this other shop, it was a horrible experience, I never liked it. Well, Mr. Customer, we'll show you what's going on with your vehicle. We will educate you through the process and keep you alongside us as we go through the whole thing. Fantastic. Once again, you can talk about your certified or certifiable technicians, right? Your nationwide warranty. How far does a warranty go when it goes to trust? Very far, right? Absolutely. What about MAP standards? What's MAP? Modus Assurance Program, exactly. Who here is MAP certified? Fantastic. Who isn't MAP certified or doesn't know if they're MAP certified? All right. Who's on TBC University? Couple of hands. All right. So you can take the Motorist Assurance Program course on TBC University. It's an online university. It's free to you because you work at Big O Tires. You take the course. It's communication standards between us, the customer, and the technician. So we're all on the same page using facts to sell instead of opinions. Highly recommend getting MAP certified and then your years of experience. You can always talk about your years of experience and not just you but your mechanics, your tire techs, your whole store combined years of experience. Maybe how long your store has been there. Who here has had a store in that place for more than 10 years? Fantastic. How far does that go when you're building trust with a customer? How long has Big O Tires been around? Since 1962, Big O Tires has been around. Yeah, same location. And the same location, right? Absolutely. All right, so since 1962, we've been here, this building's been here. Shoot, family owned, right? It's fantastic. That goes a long way to build trust with our customers. Long way. What about convenience? What can we talk about when a customer calls in with convenience as a top priority? Appointments, absolutely. Service. Yes. Whiffy? Yes, Whiffy. Hours. Hours. Yes, yes, yes. I love the speed lane. I have a huge passion for the speed lane. I'm trying to bring the speed lane back. Does convenience mean fast? No. no. Not necessarily, right? It's all about what the customer needs. All right, that's the whole point of identifying the priorities and figuring out what their needs are. How many of you guys have the complaint, it takes too long to fix my car? A lot of hands go up with that, right? That's one of our biggest complaints. Long wait times, it's taking too long to fix my car. So we're gonna think about that here for just a moment. The biggest thing is, Time is perception. Everybody's internal clock works differently. Jonathan, if I come to your store, how long for an oil change? Hour and a half. Hour and a half? Hour and a half. Okay. Two hours. Okay. Hour and a half to two hours. Okay. 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 Forty-five minutes. Okay. An hour? About forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes? 45, 45, hour and a half, hour and two and a half, 45, hour. I'm waiting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
45? An hour? In an hour? 45? 20 minutes? An hour? An hour? Okay. I like it. Say that louder. When would you like it back? What'd you say, Jamie? When do you need your vehicle back? All right. So basically, all of you just made me a promise, right? You just promised me 45, 20 minutes to, to an hour and a half, right? You just made me a promise that it's going to be done at that time. So I ask you, how hard is it to keep a promise that is based in perception? Very hard, right? I mean, almost impossible. All right, so let's eliminate the perception. Let's get rid of that complaint of it's taking too long. And let's use exact time frames. Mr. Customer, it's going to take an hour and a half. I'm showing noon on my watch. So if we're done by 1.30, are you OK with that? And then you write down 1.30 on the paperwork, or noon, or 2, or whenever. Write it on the paperwork. Now you have a promised set in fact. Everybody knows when 1.30 is. Everybody knows when 2 o'clock is. And even if they come up at 12.45 and say, hey, you told me my car will be done. What time is it? Well, I told you 1.30 we'd be done, and it looks like we're right on track. We'll have you done at 1.30. How would you handle the, well, of course, you want to call them right away, but you, know, you run into problems like, say, you break a stud on like a trap rotor on like a Honda Civic or something, where it's not just like a quick, easy fix. You know, it's going to take some time, and you probably don't want the tire guy doing it. You're probably going to want a mechanic to do it. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, but then you just ruin the time that you promised too at the same time. Absolutely, but if we got an answer here for it, all right? If I see anything that might delay us, I'll give you a call and let you know, or I'll keep in touch and let you know where we're at. There you go. Tell them up front, right? We'll keep you informed. We'll keep you along the whole process. But when it does happen, you said it yourself. You're calling them. You're contacting them, right? So just give them an updated time. If you know your mechanic has these four brake jobs or work that he's doing and he won't even be available to work on it until 3 o'clock, tell the customer, hey, I know our original promise time was 1.30. My mechanic, the guy I really want to be doing this so you know it's done right, isn't available till 3 o'clock. Can we have your car done at 4 o'clock? Absolutely. How often does that happen in your store, James? Mm, I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but it's, okay. you know, over the years, it's happened a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It does happen, right? Murphy has a tendency to hang out in our store, right? So yeah, it happens. It's going to be a challenge. But you're intelligent people. I know you can figure out a way to get it. This is an idea for you to help eliminate those times. When you run into those challenges, how would you handle it, James? There you That's go. Usually when a customer asks me how long it's going to take, the first thing I ask them, some of them actually get kind of annoyed by it, but I ask them, when do you need the vehicle? And they're like, well, that's why I'm asking you. When's it going to be done? Well, I'm just wondering, are you going to wait for it, or are you going to leave it with me? When do you need it? So okay. I try and answer it with a question. Kind of thing. Absolutely. So I'm waiting. You're waiting? Um, what are we doing? An oil change or something? Yeah. It kind of depends on how busy the day is. Say you have so five oil changes already scheduled to be at uh, 10.30 in the morning. I'm waiting. How long is it going to be? I've got five oil changes. And you're waiting? I would, I would look at my board and see what do I have. Do I have people that are already waiting? Or uh -huh. do I have time on those other tags? What I like to do is write down a time that I already have for that other tag. Or I know this customer is going to be with me and they're at work all day. So I'll bump that one down and I'll bump them up ahead. There you go. Or I'll be like, hey, you know what? I tell you what, don't tell anybody I did this, but I'm going to talk to you ahead of these other people. I'm going to get you in right now. Okay. And what time is it going to be done? I'll be done in 45 minutes. Okay. So 11.15? Yes, sir. 
right? Because you know it's going to be 45 minutes. So just clarify it a little, right? Everybody's clock is different, right? So when you tell them 45 minutes, when did their time start? Right there. Right then. Could have been? Could have been when they drove in, when they came into the front door. What were you saying, Terry? When they walked through the front door. When they walked through the front door, that could have been when it started. Huh? When they left their house. It, it could have been when they left their house. When their tire went flat. When their tire went flat, when they bought the car. Absolutely, because everybody's time's different, everybody starts different, whole nine yards. All right, and that's all I'm getting to is everybody knows what 1115 is, what 2 o'clock is things like that. I was down in Yuma, Arizona and they had a very, very similar problem. And so I was there trying to help them out and a lady walks up to the counter and she's like, hey, you told me it'd be half an hour to fix my tire. Here we are 45 minutes later. Where the hell's my car? Well, the car's coming pulling around the side of the, the building. And so I look at the timestamp on the estimate, right? Exactly half an hour from the time he printed it off to the time it was finished. That seemed like perfect timing, right? But her clock started 15 minutes prior to that. So it created a problem. Right? So let's think about that. Right? What, what image are we portraying to those customers when we give those promise times? And can we clarify it to help eliminate that issue? Throughout our entire conversation, we want to gather feedback from our customers. We want to know where they're thinking, where they're at. So how can we know what someone's thinking? Ask them, ask them questions, right? You just ask them. What kind of questions can you ask to see what a customer's thinking? So all of those questions are what we call temperature checks. So we can figure out what is a customer thinking? Where are they at in the conversation? Are they ready to give us the commitment? Or do we have to do a little more work?